When it comes to video game skins and cosmetics in general, there are many things that can boost or diminish their perceived quality. One criteria most can agree on is variation from the default appearance. Palette swaps or recolors are always the bottom of the barrel lowest ranking skins, but take a cowboy and dress him like he's going to a beach? That's variation. Another criteria I'll refer to as flair, which typically applies to skins with instantly perceivable style or accents. It's easy to think of these as the holographic Pokemon cards of skins, and they usually occupy the highest rank or tier within skins. Is there a smoldering ember or a fiery effect? Are portions of the skin see-through, or can you see a galaxy effect through it? Is there different shading? Does it react or change based on your movement or actions? Is it sexy? When you're charging your players, these things matter. In addition, there are skins and cosmetics that will call out to individual players specifically. Maybe they're an artist or an EMT. Maybe they're super into Vikings or science fiction. Maybe, like all of us, they're just a freak. If you ever looked at a skin and thought, this is me. This is literally me. Then it suits what I'll refer to as personal aesthetic. Few things are potentially more important for a skin than closely representing what player's mental image of what their avatar should be. The last criteria is rarity. Some skins are only available for a limited time or perhaps during seasonal events. Some skins and cosmetics even harken back to the good old days and are actually only unlockable through the completion of game challenges or achievements. In my opinion, cosmetics like this are the cream of the crop. An item that says, I did this during this season, or a sword on your back that says you beat all on the hardest difficulty. Some games even award cosmetics to players who were there from the start, early adopters, beta testers, people struggling through the garbage that was the beginning of this game. And if Marvel's Avengers somehow manages to secure infinite funding, they really better deliver some, like, flaming heads. Look at me. I'm Ghost Rider now. So again, variation, flair, personal aesthetic, rarity. Skins have historically offered a way to customize the player and grant a semi-different experience. Sometimes the customization runs so deep that the likelihood is slim that you'll encounter identical variations, but other times it's more about embodying your favorite characters, icons, or heroes. Superhero games have near limitless potential when it comes to different looks because comic books and their heroes' endless incarnations are deliberately playing into merchandising and the desires of potential collectors seeking to own all of, if not at least their favorites specifically. You know how I know that? Because I'm the consumer. This is just human. Do you have eyes? then you have a favorite, and maybe you're willing to pay for it. You may tell yourself it doesn't matter, but if you were offered the selection free of charge, I doubt that you'd just roll a dice and pick a random look. You might end up with the smartest color palette. Ugh. To be blunt, Marvel's Avengers fails to offer skins that excel under any of the established criteria. A marketplace this dry in a AAA game made even more paradoxical given the 80 years of drool-worthy Marvel looks to pull from will make you scratch a hole in your head if you think about it too long. Not only does Crystal Dynamics want you to forget the MCU, but it wants you to forget the comics too. Just like it forgot to be profitable. Especially after promising free updates. Great job with that, by the way, sarcasm. So, the cosmetics needed to be the most appealing thing about this game. Instead, it's quite the opposite. Did you know? Bethesda kicked off this whole paid DLC thing with the first ever paid DLC in their game, Elder Scrolls Oblivion. They had $2 horse armor, which, hilariously, caused an outrage at the time. Um, and here we are. Time flies. In most games, skins respect a tier system, with objectively better skins ranking higher. Sexier skins will sell the most. 
full stop. But sex appeal isn't limited to curves and muscles. Sometimes skins can alter a body type to better execute the vision of how the skin should look. Or it'll change the look of weapons and equipment to further spice up gameplay. This offers additional incentive for people to buy. Marvel's Avengers and its ugly, unnecessary tweaks to Captain America's shield wouldn't be so big of a deal if it had a single variation where it changed the shield. Having come fresh off the movies, even the least comic book savvy people are aware of multiple shields for Cap and multiple hammers for Thor, and Crystal Dynamics lazily hasn't included a single alternate skin that will cosmetically change the weapons. But none of us are surprised, not with a game that can't replay its own campaign still over five months after launch. In every other game, if their skins have tiers, they understand them well enough to recognize the legendaries or highest tier skins as the most impressive that the game can muster. Even if it's not appealing on a personal level, most players should objectively be able to look at it and say, oh, I get it, that's, you know, definitely legendary. Note the variation, the appeal to certain aesthetics, people's weapons change. If they have companions or mechs as part of an ultimate, they change. In Marvel's Avengers, schlubby, awkward, disgraceful, scrawny, and extremely unsexy skins poison the marketplace, with some skins hilariously asking $15 on top of the $60 people pay for this broken game. And again, if that wasn't enough, the skins are also terrible. I usually make jokes about Marvel's Avengers being like an SCP that's actually harvesting happiness and collecting data on just how much it can get away with and tormenting people, but the missteps here genuinely make most people, myself included, pity this train wreck and all the people strung along for the ride because of the decisions and choices of absolute madmen, usually Insidious microtransaction garbage exposes the intent of publishers, investors, and developers to milk the players like the good cows they consider them. But this game is so bad, it barely has time, or manpower obviously, to consider without because of all the problems within. This isn't me being a coomer, this is simply factual. When you ingest Marvel's legacy, you see beautiful, fierce sexy and powerful representations of heroes, icons that at a glance embody peak physical condition, something you might aspire to be like. With hard work, you could definitely achieve. The same can be said of the MCU, that's America's ass, beautiful mommies that could turn many parts of most of us scarlet, male or female. Dedication an intensity that will fire you the hell up. But comparatively, Marvel's Avengers choice and design was never going to impress anyone, and it didn't accidentally happen either. The choice was deliberately made to force the design with the clear belief that the IP would be able to carry the weight of all of this bullshit. <laughs> because the fanboys will just consume and look at your broke ass now. Even if there were, more than four or so decent skins in Marvel's Avengers, there are few venues to show them off, which is a very important part of a profitable game. I'm well aware, as a consumer, that tricking players into purchasing things is an insidious tactic and practice, but looking objectively at what makes sense and what makes money, I can't help but question if a teaspoon of sense went into this game. A few extremely intelligent decisions made in Fortnite include but are not limited to the lobby. When you load into Fortnite, you can invite one to 15 friends that will visually appear in your lobby with their skin and back bling visible. They can use any of the emotes that they own while in the lobby, which not so subtly advertises their skin, back bling, and emote to the player. Also, 
When loading into a match, you're teleported to a starter island to wait for the lobby to fill. Here, the dozens of players that you'll fight on the island will instinctively show off their favorite or even newly purchased emotes, unwittingly advertising to the player. This drives sales. Social hubs that fill a lobby with random players like Destiny's Tower offer the same spotlight for cosmetics. Whether achieved through beating an activity like a raid, secured during a special limited time, you had to be there type event, or even as a gaudy reward for purchasing an obnoxious $100 plus collector's edition, players are often dazzled enough by the flair and rarity of items that they likely haven't seen before to ask players, hey, where'd you get that? And whether the other player chooses to answer or not, their pride in their aesthetic grows, along with their pride in their purchase. Fortnite did Marvel better than Marvel's Avengers. How does that taste, Crystal Dynamics? You could have an Avengers tower like Destiny, like Marvel Heroes did. You could have a lobby. You could have had patrol mode. Destiny did that seven years ago. I've heard of minimum viable products, but this is ridiculous. I'm in love with the actress who plays Agatha Harkness. I said it. When it comes to rarity, Fortnite doesn't just have cosmetics that haven't appeared for multiple years. Its shop rotates daily and offers no guarantee that when some things leave, that they'll be back anytime soon. Insidious, for sure. But it does make some of what you have feel special. You know, bang for your buck. I can admit, I genuinely don't want some of my favorite things to return to the shop specifically so others cannot have them. Quite frankly, fuck them kids. Fortnite is killing it in the collaboration department too. Walking Dead, Predator, Terminator, Ryu and Chun-Li. I'm surprised they didn't get Samus after they got Master Chief and Kratos. But looking over at Marvel's Avengers ugly, casual tank top and pants outfits that most might refuse if you were to give them for free, that y'all are hilariously charging $15 for, I'm sorry. Square Enix, Crystal Dynamics, your refusal to secure and offer identical comic book skins that the fans would empty their wallets for effortlessly demonstrate how uneducated you are at best and at worst how foolish you are in assuming that the Marvel name would have guaranteed that everyone just bought it. And they might have if you had come correct, but you didn't. Ice this cake with ignorant choices like hours of a Kamala-centric story in a game you can't replay that you're forced to complete if you want decent artifacts, two archers as a first choice in a superhero game that'll take seven months to roll out while you fight the one robot enemy type on offer? The MCU succeeds with over 20 movies in 10 years, culminating in the highest grossing movie of all time. And this game ignores that? You get what you deserve, Crystal Dynamics. When the comic books boast a legacy extending back 80 years, that's longer than all of you have been alive, offering iconic, sexy, and fan favorite iterations that you fail to represent, all of you may need to stand next to one another to try to hold this colossal L. An emote with no emote wheel. Lazy asset flips and palette swaps. What should have been printing money. What should have been taking candy from a baby. Turned everybody into Maggie Simpson Crystal Dynamics. And who shot Marvel's Avengers isn't even news. Because you've been dead since launch six months ago. When you repeatedly shot yourself. Marvel's Avengers could have launched free to play and charged $20 for MCU and comic book accurate skins. And here would have been my impression of me. Damn, man. $20 is too much, man. Y'all could have made these $15, man. Damn. So, yeah, I bought $160 worth of skins. Check out these eight skins I got, man. Check them out. Check them out. Instead, Marvel. <sighs> <laughs> three villains and no Marvel locations. Oop, just kidding. Two villains. Because as I previously mentioned, you can only play the campaign once. 
After how many months? Loot so bad blues can outstat your highest level gear when the gear's even dropping with perks. Your best gear, of course, only dropping in solo modes in your multiplayer game. Modes that boil down to kill this room full of enemies 48 times with an elevator loading screen separating each room and do it alone. A scarcely updated live service with silent developers and non-existent community management, devs falling through the map on their own developer streams when they're not calling their largest community toxic because I guess they have no reason to be when the product they paid for is still broken half a year later. Crystal Dynamics, I have two questions to add to the pile of shit you've been ignoring. Is it internally understood that silence on what is being worked on further hurts profits by reinforcing speculation that support may not last? Is it internally understood that publicly highlighting toxicity as why you take breaks from your game's largest community reinforces negative behavior and ignores the respectfully articulated feedback from those that actually deserved attention? I could talk about dopamine and the sunk cost fallacy, which is the sole reason almost half of the people playing Destiny are still religiously devoted to it, but the bottom line is this. Just about everything Marvel's Avengers could have done wrong was done wrong when it comes to making itself appealing and therefore profitable. And I'll admit it, I'm jealous. I'll never know failure so profound and still have a job. If anyone listening speaks parcel tongue, can you go find out what's going on behind the scenes? I would appreciate that. Until then, I'll continue to document the consistent failures of this game, which apparently I'm now doing at great risk to my safety because loyal defenders take issue with me acknowledging the game that they love's problems. Forgive me for acknowledging the reality that this game does not exist in a vacuum. When you're older and pay your own bills, you'll learn that you don't pay more for less. And right now, we're being charged fiber prices for dial-up internet. Fortnite's incorporating dimensional jumps into its story to justify the biggest collaborations in gaming since Super Smash. The MCU is deliberately throwing off WandaVision viewers just for the sake of mind fucks in its preparation for madness in the multiverse. And who better to flex with than Nexus being Wanda Maximoff who will become the mutant she always was meant to be. Who better to demonstrate the strength of this property's colossal reach than the Spider-Men themselves? The only thing Marvel's Avengers is collaborating with is the garbage, and even that's disrespectful to the trash because some people rake in some serious hauls dumpster diving. Lazy, uninspired, unfinished, ignorant of the climate that you're currently fucking releasing in, disrespectfully silent in the midst of the most confusing dropped ball many of us have ever seen. How do you fuck this up? They did it. And somehow, with updates that are locking content, making achievements impossible, and removing features, making it so perks aren't activating abilities, you're making it worse still? I did hope and still hope that this game gets better, but I've been hoping for six months. And the decisions actively being made on a daily basis deserve consequence. I can't imagine what Crystal Dynamics' future could be until they sort this shit out. I believe this game does damage to the Marvel property, and it is not my desire to see someone who might have enjoyed this universe turned away at this dog shit. I hope that this video has provided you insight into what may have seemed a critical mentality. I just see a bigger part of this picture. If you enjoy this game, more power to you. That's all that should matter. Me acknowledging this game's problem should in no way diminish your fun. Just like people getting butt hurt doesn't erase the facts. Questioning and recognizing bad decisions are not personal attacks on people. And if you're in love with this game, bruh, good. 
There's an obvious and transparent effort, however, to cover up this game's laundry list of issues that people are outright lying about. And this sickness motivates me to inform other consumers, regardless of how toxic or hateful that makes me in the eyes and the minds of these Kyle-obsessed illiterates defending this game. Shills, defenders, if you're watching this, you're part of my origin story. Because if the creators could be less ridiculous and more human, stop manufacturing hype and sweeping all of the fucking garbage under the friggin' rug, I wouldn't feel the need to do this. I wouldn't be here right now. Shout out to the devs for breaking the game further with perks and all this garbage and instead of saying something specifically about it you haven't said a damn thing because for y'all that's normal and that's acceptable and all the people that you see making content on a daily basis for this game that haven't mentioned anything about their silence as it pertains to the things that they have broken fuck them fuck crystal dynamics Fuck all of y'all, and good luck, Crystal, because even if you had it, it won't be enough. It won't be enough. My dude, it won't be enough. Hold on. It won't be enough. Thank you all so much for watching. Spent a portion of my birthday editing this, and I meant to have it out earlier, but shit happens. Get this to 900 likes, and I'll make another Marvel's Avengers video. <laughs> I keep increasing this thinking you guys won't make it and then, you know, you you put it right back in my mouth. So, yeah. I do want to say very quickly in case anybody legitimately thinks I did anything to Super Rebel, he just saw a post on Reddit. It had nothing to do with me. The post was acknowledging how he, you know, generally just regurgitates the general sentiments of the community if he's not busy overhyping things. And he made a one minute video saying how, well, here's no personality. As if to imply, you know, his personality is what gets that minute marker all the way to eight. Very specifically eight, you know. Um, the true irony, though, that even though that last video he put out was a minute long, he still took the time to acknowledge and get people to click his sponsor. And then his comments erupted saying, hey, bro, I like this new format. <laughs> you know. You know that was not the reception he wanted. But no, I'm not, you know, I'm not laughing at it, you know. Either way, I hope they enjoy talking about what's like a month or two months down the line, maybe. Uh, Hawkeye coming out when? <laughs> and I'll talk about what's going on right now. Thank you again. Later.